Okay, well, I've got uh, 503, so I'm going to go ahead and open the meeting. Um, see. I have to go find my cell phone. I think it's downstairs. I will be right back. Okay. <clears throat> Mike Borowski um, is, has joined us and um, are, is this about um, the, uh, the tree? I think we're gonna deal with yes, 134 is. Christian um, after the public hearing. I think we're gonna start with a- Well, this is, just, us. this is just a, it's, a quick it's, uh, question. Oh. It's related to that though, Don. You sure? Yeah, it does. But all all they're asking is that we allow them to move that tree on their own. Ah. And I think that's something that we can handle right away. I see. Uh, so we may have a longer conversation after the public hearing yes. about the landscaping. Right. This concerns, this specifically concerns the newly planted evergreen tree. Right. Okay. So, and, and so I'd like to hear this before 515, because if, there, if anyone other than Nexamp is gonna move a tree planted by Nexamp, I'd like to understand the communication plan around that. Mike, you wanna go over that? No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike Borowski. No, it's Michelle. Uh, oh. It's yeah, Michelle and Tom. No, I'm Tom. Tom, that's right. Okay. Um, I don't care about the tree. Um, I was asked by Skip if he could move the tree further down. He misunderstood and said, onto my land. I don't want it on my land. They can move it down. They can move it wherever they want on their land. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. okay. Oh, I haven't been. The whole point of that tree, the location was to use it as screening. So Moving it around randomly is not the goal. It's got to be. Yeah, this is why I wanted to discuss it. Land. This is why I wanted to discuss it with the landscape plan because it's tied in with the other trees that aren't there. Okay, good. So basically, right. the point, Tom, is that you're you're conveying verbally to the planning board today that Nexam does not have your permission to move that evergreen tree into, you know, onto your land. No, no, they got plenty of land. They got plenty of space to do. It's on my land now. Should be moved a few feet over. I talked, I had a conversation with Jeff the other day and he says, you know, get it off your land. I don't know why it's on your land. And I was like, okay. all right, whatever. Okay. They can do whatever they want. On okay. their land. On their land. Yeah, yeah. No, they can't That's do whatever right. they want. <laughs> That's where okay. I got in trouble the first time. <laughs> all right, all right. So we'll, We'll integrate that into our discussion later this evening about the broader, how we're going to deal with landscaping and everything that they've done or not done on their land. Thank you. Hello. And I don't know that we need the Borowskis to stay unless they want to enjoy the proceedings. All right, is there anything else we want to discuss in the next seven minutes? Well, I think we could cover the floodplain bylaw update in that time. Yes, please. Um, after our meeting, which was very informative, I think the planning board learned probably more than the public did. I spent some time with Peggy Sloan and she agreed with my assessment, as did I believe Hannah, that we weren't ready to go to town meeting. We didn't have enough information. Also, it seemed precipitate to go to town meeting if, in fact, new maps were going to come out next summer when we'd have to then go and revote everything again. So, so we stepped back. Um, Hannah and I talked, and then she and I met with Brian Domina. He he has a planning background, as you know, he's a lawyer. We talked about the agricultural exemption some, and he pointed out that 
it permits reasonable regulation and presumably presumably floodplain regulation is reasonable, although one never knows. Um, also, there's a sentence in the in the exemption about that seems to carve out floodplain regulations, but of course, being in that section of the state laws isn't very specific or as precise as one would like. Um, he is going to ask town council for his opinion on that. And I don't think he expects a very precise answer, but anyway, we are consulting with town council and Hannah is going to contact the health department experts and get more information about septic. So that's, that's the plan. And as I recall, we're the, you know, the, the hammer or the sword of Damocles is the potential loss of access to the federal flood insurance program. But we, I gather we have quite, you know, not an unlimited amount of time, but we have a fair amount of running room so that if we don't do this, you know, this year at town meeting, next year's town meeting is still timely enough. Is that correct? She Judy? said, I don't know. This is, this is the guidance here has changed. Offer. First, first, it had to be done before the end of 2021. Then it had to be done by town meeting in 2022. Now, what I heard her say is that uh, it doesn't absolutely have to be done until the FEMA maps come out. And then I assume you have a window. But um, so that's if yeah. I'm sorry, Hannah. I'm keep talking over you. I'm just going to say that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we've got time to get it right. And there was the, it, I did find that the public education session very educational as well. And the interaction with the uh, Conservation Commission about promulgating regulations. So, Judy, do you anticipate that some of the work to be done is to sort of draft up, you know, collaborate with? Conservation Commission around these regulations, or what do you see as the major steps to be ready for? Uh, I think that would happen, but I think the way the way Scott phrased it, it was you, you don't do that till after you have the bylaw. Okay. But I think you might have representative kinds of re regulations to yeah. talk to people about. Yeah. That shouldn't be too hard. They wouldn't wouldn't intend to be comprehensive at that point, but just okay. Good, because obviously, as you you heard, so many questions that were really about process, right? And it seemed like we weren't quite ready to give the kind yeah. of answers that. No, we're not at all, and yeah. and also, Brian has still a enforcement issue with whether the building inspector mm -hmm. should should be the enforcement person or not and and so that that's another issue that we tabled we it wasn't relevant for the educational session but will be for for the drafting of the final bylaw sounds good to me we could approve the three-year term for planning board members Oh yeah. So what's that um, again? What was that about? In the last, e there was a, a set of email that I saw that said that they were giving everyone, or we were all supposed to have five-year terms. And then there was pushback, and now I hear the town moderator has decided to make all these terms planning board member terms three years. Is that right, Judy? There's some things that happened that I didn't see. That. Yeah, he. Well, let me step back. I'm on my fifth three-year term. We have we have always assumed that it was a three-year term. Um, Amy read the bylaw and discovered it was five and wanted to adjust everybody's terms. And that didn't seem quite fair when we all thought we were on three-year terms. And I think I talked to Nat and he agreed that he thought it would be very difficult to recruit people for five-year terms. 
And mm. so he agreed to submit a bylaw change mm. and um, it will be on the warrant. Um, and passage would be helped if we voted to approve it. Okay. Is this just for the planning board or all town boards? It's just the planning board. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally he's changing the term. He's mm -hmm. taking away five and replacing it with three is the... Okay, and you weren't advocating for 15 year terms. <laughs> okay. no, you better watch yourself. All right. All right, so is there, are you making a motion, Judy? I will move that we support the general bylaw amendment that changes planning board terms from five years to three. I'll second, second that. that. Oh. <laughs> if Sarah seconded it. Okay. I think there were three. All right. <laughs> is there uh, any further discussion? Hearing that, I'll call for a vote. Tom? Yes. Don, aye. Judy? Aye. Brant? Yes. And Sarah? Aye. We are unanimous. <laughs> okay. All right, so it shall be recorded in the minutes. Is anyone else on here for, other than what's on the agenda? We've got anything informal what needs to be discussed. All right, well, my clock says 5.15 right now. So I'm gonna open the public hearing on the bylaw change for adding marijuana delivery, um, trucking and services, Rezone parcel 12.024-2 on State Road. And I'm standing by to share screen with any of uh, the material Judy circulated and that's also, I think, posted. Well, why don't we do it in order? So we'll bring up the zoning bylaw change for marijuana first. Sure, first. Again. All right, so let me share my screen. And I think it's all in this one document that you should be able to see. So what are we starting with, Don? I apologize. Um, modify the marijuana bylaw. Okay, very good. You're right in the right place. So maybe I'll make the text a little smaller, so more will. Okay. I'm gonna need it basically, it's all on the second page. Yeah. We, um... Yes, totally. All right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, my... Sorry, I'm just I'm trying so... to get this. All right. Who's ever talking should either mute themselves or. All right. Uh, okay. So this is this one to modify the marijuana bylaw as follows. So, Judy, you want to take us all through the spirit and wording of the changes? These are two types of licenses that are new since, since we passed the original marijuana bylaw. And they both involve a uh, delivery of marijuana products uh, to retail people, to cus final customers. Um, there are there are two types. Um, one is delivery, is called marijuana delivery. That's the second one there. And it's basically a business where somebody goes to the wholesaler, picks up an order to be delivered to the customer and um, period. They don't take any of this back to their to their place of business, um, they, they are purely delivery people. Or maybe have I got them backwards? I've got them backwards. The courier is just, just delivering. The first one, just delivering. The delivery one is this, 
essentially the same thing. They purchase it wholesale, but they can store and repackage and have a warehouse so they can um, relabel and, and then deliver the goods. So they cannot, they have to deliver directly to the customer. They can't operate a storefront, but yeah, they, they can, can have- Judy, they, they can, can cannot repackage it actually. They can only That's buy packaged delivery. stuff and deliver it. Yeah, they can label, they can relabel it. They can okay. label and sell and deliver and they can store it. Um, oh. And if you scroll down, so those are the definitions. If you scroll down to the table of use and the table of use is the part of our bylaws that explains what districts, what zoning districts you can have what businesses in. And each of these businesses would be allowed only in commercial, commercial industrial and industrial, and they would all require special permits. They have the same setback requirements that the other marijuana businesses do. Um, I think they are probably less intrusive than, than say a marijuana um, retail business. Um, or a manufacturing business for that matter. Um, and that's about all I have to say. So let me just summarize at least for my own benefit. So one, one thing that we're proposing and seeking public feedback on is we're adding these two definitions to the zoning bylaws. These two definitions don't currently exist in the bylaws, correct Judy? Correct, and neither of these businesses a lot is currently allowed in town. That's right. So the intent of all of this is to permit these two kinds of businesses, marijuana couriers and marijuana delivery establishments to operate in town. And so we're doing that by adding these definitions and revising the table of use to explicitly list them because by their absence, they would be prohibited by default. So we're adding them as um, permitted uses, but we're restricting them to, uh, we're, we're, they're prohibited in the AR1 and AR2 districts. They're permitted in the other three commercial, commercial industrial and industrial, but they require a spec to, to operate, they would first need a special permit from the ZBA. I so think the way to say it is they would be permitted if they get a special permit. That's right. And I, as I recall, Judy, um, we add an asterisk in these tables if uh, a planning board review is also required. Am I confused about that? Or would they also be required to get planning board, go through a site plan approval by the planning board. Yes, they would be required to have site plan approval. We put that asterisk in for agricultural, for special agricultural um, uses that would normally not have site plan review. Okay. Um, agriculture is norm normally exempt, but all commercial and commercial industrial and industrial projects always require site plan review. So, okay. Yes, these would require site plan review. Very good. Okay. So I think this is the chance for members of the public to ask questions or make comments on this particular proposed change. Can I ask you to uh, scroll back down again so I could read the second one? It seems more like it's uh, marijuana DoorDash that you're allowing. Marijuana delivery. Am I, am I reading that correctly? The so they're able courier to courier one is the DoorDash. Yeah, the courier. So that so if I'm understanding how these would be applied, is you would have a business that would allow there would be no on-site. I'm I'm trying to understand how it would be applied. Yeah. So how it would be applied, Rich, is that uh, somebody in town, if they had um, land on an industrial or uh, commercial could set up a bit biz business to do that. People can already get DoorDash uh, 
type stuff because I know that the Northampton <clears throat> Northampton one is already doing that and um, we don't have any regulations against it. That's a very important point. That came up, a, a related question came up from, um, yeah, there, Waitley does not have any general bylaws that regulate the um, delivery of marijuana to residents in town. As you know, if those businesses are operating out of outside Waitley, right? So you courier services in say Hatfield or Northampton, they can operate, they can courier things to Waitley, from Waitley, to make deliveries to Waitley. We, that would be a general bylaw matter versus a zoning bylaw matter. What we're doing with the zoning bylaws is making it possible for these two kinds of establishments to um, operate in town, have land, set up businesses and operate in town. I should have also said that these businesses have very have the same extensive state regulation that the other marijuana businesses do, and especially the delivery one for their wholesaling, um, where the where there may be marijuana on site has the whole security, um, the the same kind of security requirements that that both retailers and cultivators and manufacturers have. But the, these people are required for their drivers that they, they have quarry checks and security clearances and the, the operators of the businesses are required to um, go through the same kind of approvals and licensing that, that the other marijuana establishments have. If I can jump in here, it doesn't look like there's any um, language in the bylaw to assess the amount of traffic that's going to be added to Route 5 in the neighborhood, nor the hours of operation during these activities. Is there any consideration for that? Those would be covered with a site plan review. But it doesn't sound like there is a site plan review with these. Yeah, yeah. there is a site plan review. Yeah. Sorry if I muddied those waters, Rich. They, but Judy clarified is that for um, any project, whether it's these listed here in, um, or but any, any commercial, commercial industrial or industrial project in Waitley requires site plan review. But the, new building the, state, or the state limits the hours of operation to, I think it's 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. The town could limit it more than that. But the, does the town have the authority to do such or language? Yes, oh yes, that's, that's do so. yeah. sure, that's part of the-, the Rich, any, any new review. building or any change of use in any building always requires a site plan review. Got and it. The, it just seems that over the, uh, being in other uh, meetings, I realized that there, it, it seems like the planning board is limited to how much restriction it's able or willing to put on a, a business and it's in and that business's impact on the environment when it comes to you know traffic and stuff there are some things that you obviously do get involved with but this seems like the leniency is more towards the business than the residential community well the, the yeah, fact of the matter is that we can we cannot deny a site plan review all we can do is modify it to make it the best condition it, condition it. Um, sorry condition it i mean Though I, I suppose it's true that we can deny a site plan review if the plan is somehow in violation of zoning bylaws. But where I think we get into these gray areas is where a plan appears to be um, compliant with zoning bylaws, um, but then there's you know variations of opinion about whether an otherwise allowable business ought to be allowed to operate in town or whether we can or should impose other restrictions on them. Um, 
for health and safety and welfare and things like that. But for, mo for the most part, the, the Planning Board of, Sony Board of Appeals can actually not approve a special permit. Yeah. And they're the ones that have actually more power as far as you were concerned about, Rich, than, than we do. I'm just trying to understand why we're put why the town is putting this in. If it uh, is there has there been a request to modify the uh, bylaws to uh, allow for something? <clears throat> no, we're First, just trying to go ahead, Judy. You answer that, Don, and then I'll. Oh, you started. You started saying. This. Well, I wanted to finish up on the on the on the previous one. I checked the marijuana bylaw and the bylaw itself, the main marijuana bylaw, uh, says that all marijuana operations have to operate between seven a.m. can't exceed the hours of seven a.m. to eight p.m. And I'm sure they could be limited below that. Um, so, if you wanted to answer this question, Don. Uh, restate the question, Rich. Well, I was trying why? to understand why these were being modified and added oh. into the bylaws in the first place. Was there a request to do so? Um, these two courier and delivery are, are relatively new. And if we don't uh, put in, um, add them to our use of regulations, then we will have uh, no way to block or modify any plans. But if they're not included, then they can't utilize them in yeah. the first place, correct? No, I, I think the Rich, the motivation is that these seem to be reasonable businesses for the town, and we would not want to discourage uh, a viable business opportunity if it's properly controlled. I would agree that you know the town, adding more business within the town to a reasonable extent is absolutely appropriate. But I want to, my concern as a resident, longtime resident, is that what does it do to the character? I mean, are we going to allow ourselves to become Route Nine and Hadley, or or then some, or are we going to try to contain um, a certain amount of small town flair to our residential atmosphere on Route Five? Because there is some. Um, to what extent are we opening the doors and um, changing the character altogether? And, and when I grew up as a kid, we Route Five was a scenic route. Now it's no longer that. And to what extent is that going to perpetuate? Uh, and how these bylaws um, reflect that is my concern as a citizen here. You know, like the trucking and construction equipment services. Uh, you know, we get a lot more trucks going down the road and, and it's obtrusive. Uh, there's a lot more going on and uh, all that additional noise is um, concerning. And so that's why those are the things that I'm concerned about. The, the, unless you can regulate the hours of operation on trucking, uh, uh, it makes it really hard for as a resident on Route 5 to uh, be in support of it. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, again, this is this is delivery to residences um, right but it also and i think of, of all of i think it's comparatively a very very uh unobtrusive kind of business that the trucks would be presumably out on the road all day um they're not going to show up at somebody's house before um Right, but you also have trucking and construction equipment services added to the place. We aren't there. We're not there yet. Oh, I see. Okay. We're All talking right. about the marrow, the two marijuana ones. Anyone else have any questions about the marijuana? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to. If if you. How is this different than the, the delivery services that operate now, say Amazon Prime and FedEx? There's no hourly restrictions on how they can operate in town, is there? No. So, no they're delivering in town, though. They're not delivering from town. Yeah. They're not operating under the marijuana bylaw. And as, as Rich said, they're not operating from town. Yeah, so again, it's worth restating that the 
zoning bylaws and th these in particular are applying to owners and operators of business within the borders of Waitley. So if Amazon were to set up a, um, an operation within Waitley from which they did um, delivery, then zoning bylaws could apply to the establishment of that Amazon business. Of course, we're not, Amazon is not gonna be delivering marijuana, I assume, but, but however, the town has general bylaws separate and apart from the zoning bylaws that regulate things like what, what can happen within the town. And there are some towns that have bylaws that regulate the hours during which things like marijuana could be delivered to residents in town. Waitley does not have any general bylaws at present that, that regulate that. And such bylaws are not the purview of the planning board anyway. So I guess the answer is this, this type of delivery service is much more controlled than those, both at the state level with the way they're the way they have to operate and because of our marijuana operate by law because of, of that and the zoning. Can I ask this question? How, uh, what's to uh, regulate the number of businesses that would proceed in this manner? I mean, are we still at three businesses in town? I think it was that allowed uh, to um, utilize marijuana as a production or sale. I'm trying to understand how it's, this bylaw can accelerate. The limit is only on retail operations. So there's no limit on wholesale. We could have 10 wholesalers that are selling out of Waitley. We could, but as a practical matter, it seems highly unlikely that. Yeah. But we could. Wouldn't the answer to that be similar to why couldn't we have 25 self-storage facilities operating in town? It's the same question. Yes, I understand. Yeah, there's no no regulation of that except the broader market. It, it's certainly not the, if 25 different um, operators of self-storage bought land and wanted to operate. Are there, are there any um, regulations that uh, precede this that allow for the, or regulate the type of uh, business or type of uh, environment that they can deliver from out of? And it, is it the same criteria as used for um, um, retail marijuana sales? I don't understand the question, Rich. When they're putting the retail marijuana sales in town, um, there are criteria associated to hours of operation, setbacks. Um, yeah, all those all those apply. All those do apply. The same. This, this same is line. this is these are literally inserted in the marijuana bylaw that um, determines that. And I just read you the hours of operation from that. Yeah. But they do apply, the hours of operation apply to these also, these businesses as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I do think the, the general point Rich is bringing up about what businesses can or should be allowed in town is an you know, interesting philosophical one. I note that the zoning bylaws do take stands on certain kinds of businesses that are explicitly not allowed in town. Car washes, for example, all springs to mind. And, um, pig adult farms. What was that? Pig farms. Pig farms, dry cleaning establishments. Um, when I came on to the planning board a little over a year ago, it was sort of impressed upon me that the mission of the planning board is to try to balance um, you know, the protection of the health and the welfare and the well-being of the citizens of Waitley with some economic development goals to broaden the tax base, um, strengthen the town and so forth. So I'm sure there are, there are judge differences of opinion about when and under what conditions should the town you know, become more open, you know, open up to new kinds of businesses. I think the sense of the planning board so far, you know, pending feedback from you, know, you and others in town is that allowing for 
marijuana courier operations and marijuana delivery operations set up in town seemed like something, those seem to, at least seem to me that I'm open to seeing those kind of businesses enter town and become part of our tax base and so forth. And it was my assessment that the impact on the citizens wouldn't be, wouldn't be, would be net beneficial to the town versus harmful. And that's why we have these public hearings to get a sense of just how people feel about that. Well, if, if I were to comment on your response there, the net benefit to somebody living up uh, in town away from Route 5 is uh, there's a gain because they don't ever, be, they're never exposed to the traffic, they're never exposed to the environment, they're never involved in it unless they drive through. But those folks who live on Route 5, myself and many others, um, you know, we're directly exposed to it. So, you know, we're paying the same tax base as everyone else. We should have the same benefit and not have to take the burden of adding all that additional traffic. And, and and so I that's think you're completely... I understand that, you know, because we're in the commercial zone, we, there, there's a certain amount of uh, responsibility we have to endure and shoulder. But on the same token, there needs to also be a, a consideration for how any bylaw change can accelerate to the point where it makes it un, you know, relatively unlivable in, uh, in this particular environment. And because... Well, that was one reason we picked these two, because they seem to be quite unobtrusive. Um, if, if for a commercial use in an area that's zoned commercially compared to say a, a large retail facility or, or something. I think Rich is trying to control how much traffic can go up and down Route 5. And then uh, there's right. nothing that we can do about that. I mean, no, but in I, Haydenville, I Road, Haydenville Road has got the, exactly the same problem. I've got a uh, truck going by my house all hours of day and night and uh, lumber trucks coming down and using their jake brakes. I mean, you've got nothing against compared to uh, it's anything worse than Haydenville Road is right now. We've got more than our share of trucks with jake brakes too. Um, well, no, just trying, you don't live at the bottom of a hill. <laughs> at, the, at a sharp corner where everybody's slowing down for it. I, I, I realize that you know, there are other places that have to take a certain amount of burden. And I'm just as a, as a longtime Waitley president, seeing the town change considerably, I just wanted to make sure that a certain amount of character is left um, and that uh, any decisions that are made don't allow us to run off to make any choices that we can't back out of. All right. Well, those don't have anything to do with what we're talking about right now. So I'm going to close the. Uh, do we want to wait? Do, well, do we want to do close the hearing? We, we yeah. can close the discussion I, on marijuana, but we need to keep I, the do, hearing. Do we open. want to do the other one and yeah. do it as two or one? It's one hearing, it has to be one hearing. We advertised yeah. one hearing. Okay. Let's move on to the uh, trucking then. I. Have you heard from the Monahans? I This was one we put up in case they found it was necessary and we weren't sure that it was. The last I heard, and I think it was Don who circulated this around, that the Monahans have requested that their property, their parcel be rezoned commercial and that um, this, um, this use be allowed. Um, actually, they were not concerned about the use being allowed because they've got an existing situation already, and and uh, the senior Monahan is got is doing most of his trucking wherever the heck he is. Okay. So in that case, I don't think we should include it. We, if they, if they, um. It was intended as an accommodation for them. Yeah. And if they aren't specifically yeah. requesting it, then I, I think we should just skip it. Yes, what, one concern I have is, I, I know what's going on at, the, at, the, at that property very briefly, but 
Uh, how does this apply to truck sales or servicing trucking equipment? I mean, it, it doesn't address that at all. You know, our bylaw has 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 a special provisions in the use table for our, for repair shops and for for. I uh, think it's auto repair shops and auto vehicle, auto automobile sales and service. But does automobiles also include trucks? This is unrelated to that. If 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 we were going to bring it forward, Fred, it would permit businesses that make their trucks available to do work for other people. Okay, but I, I, I'm on. I may be wrong, but. I, it's possible that they service trucks there, whether it's theirs or others, and what's to prevent them from selling trucks there? Because that's not allowed. Well, it's a business I, providing. I, I, anyway, it's it's a moot point. If I I think we probably okay. I mean, I is there but, is there any sentiment on the planning board for continuing with this if if the Monahans don't want it? This is this is Sue Monahan. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. We are here. We are requesting that our property be zoned commercial. And it actually was already approved by the attorney's general, attorney general's office on November 18th, 2021. Our property is currently zoned commercial based on her approval. We just want to confirm that that is properly recorded through the town of Whaley. Actually, Sue, as I told you before, that was approved, but the attorney general did not approve it because of the language and for a, uh, a mistake that was made in the advertising. So I, I do though, understand. Even though the Whaley approved I, it, the attorney general of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts did not approve it. And that's why we're I, having I, another hearing tonight. Yeah, I do understand that, but actually the attorney general did approve it. And I have confirmation from her documentation that she did. The did attorney and we just want, we're not looking for any type of controversy. We just want to confirm that it's all documented properly. Does anybody have more information on this than I do? This is the last I heard, the attorney general had sent it back. And that was according to the town clerk. This this I, I do have, I do have a copy of the map. That Go, was ahead, Go ahead. I, I do have this? a copy of the map that was approved on November 18th, 2021. By who? By the attorney general. Can you and it's on up? it's on and it's on the town of Waitley's website, and I have it printed out in front of me. So could I just intervene here? So let me recap what I think I'm hearing from this monitor. So you're you're telling the planning board that you're you have information that, that we don't have, which is fine, from the attorney general confirming that your parcel has been rezoned commercial. Is that correct? Actually, no, because the information I got came from the town's website and we confirmed it with the attorney general. Uh, it's listed on the town's website on the zoning map. Okay. If you check the meeting, the meeting minutes for November, um, for last year, it's approved November 18th and it's the piece of property that I just purchased has been approved. It was supposed to be approved. And then there was some controversy as to filing. Uh, but in the end, it appears that it has been approved. So we just want to confirm that everything is done properly. And we're paying tax on a commercial property. And that's what we expect and anticipate. So we're just making sure that your records are Correct. Okay. Well, if, if not, you can, not, if not, we want it. We want it. You know, we want it approved to be commercial property. Okay. Well, that's that was the part about rezoning the parcel, and 
I, yeah. I, you... I know there was an was an issue with wording or something the way it was filed from the town. I understand that, um, but in the end, it was approved by the attorney general. Um, so the attorney to, to general change. approved all the change. rest of of the of the votes except that was was our understanding. Unfortunately, the map shows it as commercial. Well, if you if you call up the map, it it includes that parcel, in addition to Kyle's. Yes, but that was based on the same information you got that it had been approved, and by the town. Um, that was based on the town's vote, right? Not the attorney general's approval. And then about six months ago, we got a letter from the. Attorney General saying that they found a mistake. Is that true, Judy, or am I got this wrong? That's that's my understanding. I think okay. I think what we should do is we 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 should as we go through this. If if you shoot, how do I put this? Um, I think we should go through and put the put the change in zoning on the warrant if 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 in fact I mean we had approved it before I assume we would do that again but um and if if you're we can recheck that document but I'm quite sure it says that the other items there were approved but not that one and so this this is sort of a redo to fix that. So here's what I propose. And so if Ms. Monahan will bear with me. Um, so what I'll do is I will check in with the town clerk because this the communication around this matter is now at least half a year old. Um, but I will try to establish the, the status of the rezoning because what I recall is that we voted to approve in the planning board, it went before the town, the town approved it, but then all of that was sent to the attorney general. And because of uh, an error in how the, the hearing had been uh, not fully properly advertised in advance of town meeting, uh, the attorney general rejected the uh, change of zoning. It is possible that the attorney general could have rejected the change in zoning and through an internal miscommunication, the online zoning map was updated improperly. So uh, I just wanna caution you, Ms. Monahan, from looking at the online map and taking that as uh, proof or documentation that the zoning, the rezoning to commercial for your parcel is fully approved and legitimate. And I'm gonna take it on myself, an, an action for the planning board to sort out the facts here and let everybody know what, what we believe the truth to be. However, because we're doing a public hearing tonight on the rezoning, I think it would be uh, wise of us to uh, basically have the public hearing tonight as if it had failed to be approved properly last year. And then vote to approve the zoning, be ready to put this on the town meeting warrant this coming May for a, vote, for a, a proper vote yet again. Uh, and then if it turns out between, as I research this, that a town vote on this rezoning this coming town meeting is not necessary, we'll simply take it off the warrant. Does that sound reasonable? That's Yes, that's completely acceptable. Yep. Can I just say something? This was brought up at the, the special town meeting, I don't know, several months ago. We talked about it. And, and my understanding was that this parcel was inadvertently omitted from either planning board or the attorney general's approval. And, and to, to get approval, it had to be... Uh, presented uh, at a public hearing 
for the abutters to voice their concerns. And that was the whole issue that the abutters for this parcel, not, the, not everything that was proposed, but for this parcel, were not informed because it wasn't on the agenda to be, be approved. It was That's not quite right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It was, it was inadvertently omitted and it has to go back to having a public hearing. And the other point I would like to make is the map, the zoning map is not the final decision point of what is approved for zoning because there are errors in the map. There are errors in the existing map that was printed, that, that was approved by attorney general. We can, I can talk about this later on in this meeting, but that should not be the final decision of whether it's approved or not based on the map. It's based on town actions and town committees and by attorney generals. I think you're, we you're agree with that part of your what you from said. The town right. clerk that she's going to pull out the, the minutes of the meetings where these actions were taken and approved, not a map showing it. Yeah, that's that's fine, Fred. The the part about the the public hearings though was not correct. The initially the parcel was inadvertently omitted from the warrant and did not get voted on. So it was taken to a special town meeting. It was proper, it was advertised, the abutters were informed. The legal ads appeared. The attorney general took exception because the legal ad did not indicate where the map of the parcel could be found. And so that was why the, the attorney general did not approve that particular zoning change. And that's why we're going through it again. But the abutters were informed. It was the other, it, it was the fact that the legal ad didn't say you could find the, the map of the parcel at town offices was the problem. I definitely remember a public hearing with the abutters, uh, with some abutters present. Yep. Well, okay. I still make the comment about the map. The map is not the final. That's right. That's right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to research the status of this and try to ascertain the, um, the, the, the this. But I think for tonight, we're assuming the rezoning did not go through. So there were really two, these two related topics. One, just the change of the zoning of the parcel. And two, what we're, I've still been sharing my screen. And, and this is the part now that I'd like to find out from all involved, including Ms. Monahan. I thought we were tonight having a hearing not only on the rezoning of the Monahan parcel, but that we were, we were proposing to add this um, definition of trucking and construction equipment services um, to the bylaws because this kind of use is uh, something that the Monahans would like to be able to do on that parcel in the future. Actually, actually I'd like to interrupt you. Um, I really don't need that for okay. Yeah, we've already decided I, I to drop that brand. Okay. Okay, well, it's helpful zone. to have that. As far as, far as use, I bought, I bought the part, it, it is trucking. I bought the parcel that abuts my son's property in his best interest. You know, that protects his future interest, okay. that property. I would like it zoned commercial. If it hasn't happened, I would like it to happen. However, you guys need to do that. Um, but that's what we're requesting. Okay. Okay. So then as far as as far as trucking and excavating, I mean, do you you know, we have Amherst trucking, we have Goulet trucking, we have Morosky excavating. Do you want to change all of that zoning affecting these local businesses? I don't think so. But if you guys want to go there, that's your choice. They're existing, so there's not too much we can do about them. 
they predated the the but the zoning. Okay, well, if you if you're not feel don't feel a need for this, then I I think we should just yeah. So just to be I, trans, I, just really maybe this is for my own benefit because what just has come up is that um, businesses that were operating in town for example, trucking and construction equipment services businesses that were operating in town before the zoning bylaws went into effect were grandfathered and they can continue to operate for the indefinite future. But it would be different if a new business wanted to set up and operate, um, create a new use of a, an existing parcel within say the commercial district. So I'm just, so this is when um, new businesses versus existing businesses would be impacted by what is or is not present in the zoning bylaws. Okay, I would like to take up the portion where we approve the change from uh, to uh, commercial industrial for the Monaghan lot. Okay. Do we, so we, have, so we have a motion and we know what the parcel is. I don't know it off the top of my head. Let's go back to page one of this. We're still in the public hearing, so. Yes, very good. John, are you gonna be doing commercial industrial or just commercial? Uh, commercial, sorry. Yeah. So this, the commercial was initially requested by Wendell Oski. And then he sold it before the, the day before we had we're supposed to have the meeting, public hearing. So we are now proposing that changing the parcel 12-0-24-2 on State Road from Ag 11 to commercial. And that the towning map already is uh go beyond the lesbians done, but We'll include that anyway. Do I have a second? Well, I'll we second can't that. vote now. We're still oh. in the public. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. Any yeah. comments by the um, planning board at this point? Well, comments from the public. I think is it is it is true. I think that the parcel to the south is zoned commercial, as is the parcel to the north. Right. What parcel to the north is commercial from this? I thought that's residential. I think they're all commercial. What are, what are, you, what are you talking Everything. about? Could you please explain, Judy? I, I'm not, I don't see that everything on here is all commercial. Okay, well, I take the parcel to the south is. Right, okay. Now, okay. prior to that, it was commercial on the other side of the bridge. Right. It's been that way for a while. Not north of the bridge. No, south of the bridge. South yeah. of the bridge no, has been it, commercial for a long time. Right. It's north of Kyle Monahan's property, which right. is north the bridge. It abuts Kyle Monahan's property, right across from LaSalle. Right. And mm -hmm. that is north of the bridge. South of the bridge has been commercial forever. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anybody have any objection to changing the, this to commercial? Any I members would, of the board? I would prefer it not. Who was that? That was Sandy speaking? Yep. Okay. I'm on partial 12022 and 12021. And could you elaborate on um, the nature of your objection, please? Well, I'm residential. I know he's done a lot of work. He's working on putting a berm in to add privacy and limit the noise. 
um, because right now with Kyle's stuff, with the trucks coming and going and starting and running at all hours of the night, um, I'm just afraid that he'll end up doing the same thing on that particular spot, 24 two. Excuse me, but for the minutes, when we're saying he here, which party are we referring to? Uh, Mr. Monaghan for the uh, the 24-2 lot. But not, but not Kyle Monaghan? Uh, no. Kyle's business is already up and running, but it's he who, it's that property with the trucks coming and going. I'm just afraid 24-2, if you change it to commercial will also start later on with trucks coming and going at all hours. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the property? Uh, I, need, the property to make, I need to comment out? here. I need to comment here to Monahan. Kyle Monahan has one truck. That's all I'm gonna say. He mm -hmm. has one truck that he drives that comes in and out. What are, and can, can you, how, about, you, how about 91? This, this parcel is entrapped between 91 and Route 5 and the exit from 91 to Route 5. There's at least 200, probably 220 trucks that go back and forth between these parcels. And you're going to label Kyle Monahan? I don't think so. We have three acres next to him. We're buying the, we have the parcel in his best interest. We're just confirming him. We're not starting a trucking business. We've run a trucking business out of this town for 20 years, 20. We've served this town beyond anyone's belief. And now you have angered me, all right? I don't understand why you're getting angry. All I'm trying to do is protect my property, my property value. That's all. And I That's understand fine. why you would want it as commercial for future use. You don't need to be angry. Well, that future use doesn't necessarily mean trucking. It just means that commercial could be done on there. Well, I think we've heard both sides of the argument. Yeah. Does agree. anyone else have comments? Yeah, if I if I may, any if it's commercial use, any commercial use is valid once it becomes commercial use. That's the that's the concern I think that the neighbor has is that once you're adjacent a commercial use, it's very difficult to change anything and all the and, you know, I've seen what Monahan's doing it. There's a lot going on there, and I can appreciate that they've helped. Uh, they've been involved in the town for some years now. But I, on the same token, you, you have to consider everybody in town, not just business, not just the resident. You have to consider everybody. And if you turn I think it it's, for use, Rich, I think it's important to note that the, when Kyle Monahan went through his got his business, he, his approval process was a little different than normal and he didn't have a site plan review and he didn't have special permit and as a consequence didn't get a lot of the controls that normally would go on I don't think that that's going to happen again but it did happen and if it can happen it did happen and it's been fixed I, I, I as an advocate of route 5 and people who live on route 5 not just in the commercial zone but all the way down route 5 because eventually uh, commercial zone may extend itself down. There's a lot of residential homes on Route 5 and we, as all of us who live on Route 5, have the same benefits and rights. We should be able to be considered just the same. And I understand that it, commercial properties should be allowed to have some leeway and freedom to be able to run a commercial business, but you also have to consider, consider uh, the, the, the residential character of the adjacent lots. I just want to let be known. Thank you. Are we ready to take a vote? Well, I think we need if we need to see if there's more comment and then close the public hearing. Any further comments by from the public? 
Excuse any me. further comments from the board? Are, are you going to be voting on this as one item or two pieces? Well, let's wait till we get to the vote, Mary. Okay, I'm just a little, I sort of lost track of what happened at the conclusion of the part one discussion. Is it going to be? We will get to the vote. Oh, let's okay, see. okay. We're still on a public hearing. I am now gonna close the public hearing at 6.08. And the board will discuss what we want to do. So, so we'll first discuss the marijuana changes. Yep. I move that we approve the marijuana changes as outlined in the document that Grant has shown and as outlined in, in the proposed bylaw amendments including both the definitions and the table of use. I will second that. Any further discussion? Take a voice vote. Don, yes. Judy? Yes. Brant? Yes. Tom? Yes. Yeah, I move. Um, sorry. Sarah? Yeah, I'm sorry, Sarah. Sorry. So, Mary, uh, you got that? We just voted on the marijuana courier delivery changes. In part both, one of the public both definitions and the table of use. Definitions and table of use, as shown in what's posted on the website. Yeah, the proposed yes. bylaw amendments. I move we, we do not approve the addition of trucking and construction equipment services, either the second. definition or the table of use. I have a second. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? A voice vote, Sarah? Give me a thumbs up, Sarah. Don, yes. Judy? Yes. Mary? Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. Brad? <laughs> yes. And Tom? Yes. Okay, the... I couldn't hear Sarah, but is everybody voted? No. You voted aye, Sarah? No, I voted no. Okay. Okay. So you're voting, you, you do think that that should be approved. Okay, I'm sorry, I had a personal emergency, but okay. I diverted it. So what am I voting on exactly? Um, not using, not sending to town um, meeting the truck trucking. We are removing the trucking portion. Right. Yes. Yeah. So what is going to happen if, what needs to be addressed with this trucking commercial and construction equipment services? Because this was definitely not addressed with the interesting predicament that happened with the initial property. And it probably left an opening that what was going on. So I don't think it had anything to do with the initial Of course, we shouldn't be, in theory, we may need to stop the vote if we're having a discussion. Well, I just was unsure of what Sarah was voting. So we have four. I think that, well, let me just clarify what I think we're, what I think we're voting on. I'm sorry. I've highlighted this term, trucking and construction equipment services. This definition and a, uh, and this row in the table of use is not currently present in the zoning bylaws. There's no definition, 
no entry in the table of use. We were having a public hearing tonight on adding this definition and adding this row to the table of use. I think that we've arrived at possibly a consensus on the board that no, we're not going to add this definition and we're not going to add this entry to the table of use, meaning that there is no change. We're, we're, we're trying to vote to basically make no change to the zoning bylaws. However, I, I maybe I should, I know we're mid vote, but I think the absence of a definition of trucking and construction equipment services from the table of use would mean that if a new, you know, if a property owner in town in, in an appropriate district wanted to establish a new trucking and construction equipment services business on their parcel, they would be impeded if not blocked from doing so because there is no allowed use for that in the table of use. Is that an accurate statement, Judy? We don't know that for sure. There was some suspicion that that might be the case, but we have not had a formal definition from the building inspector that that's true. If, if that's the case, how, how could the Moynihan property have gone ahead? Um, because they got it as a home occupation. That's a long story. We could fill you in yeah. later, but yeah. that one. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do that in a, on, a re, on a commercial property. Okay. So in some sense, um, feedback from, say, oh. Rich would be, so we're, this is an example where the planning board is not explicitly expanding the list of a, approved commercial uses in town. We were going to do this if the Monahans felt that they needed it. They told us that they don't need it. Mm -hmm. um, that was the instigation. And so if they did it, if, if what they're doing is is allowed as a home occupation, if it's a legitimate home occupation, that can continue. If it turned into a true- Well, no, I think, well, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so Sarah, did that clarify for you? Yes, so right on? now, if this is zoned commercial property, this, there it's is to the nothing bill. on it the table of use if we take this off that will allow that on a piece of commercial property either way if if we take this out it will be entirely up to the building inspector to determine whether it's an eligible use per our current zoning yes thank for you our current zoning okay then that is now a yes thank you for the further discussion okay so the the motion passes unanimously did tom vote Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Judy was partway through making a motion to not to approve this zoning change. Yes. So this is part three, right? Right. So, so Mary, this will be the, the motion that we got highlighted. Okay with you, Judy? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Judy made the motion. Any I'll second further, the motion. Further so uh, this discussion? Is, yeah, so this is the rezoning of the parcel based on the assumption that it's it had it was not properly rezoned in the past. Right. And based, can, can I get some clarification? So based on what the vote we took about removing the trucking. Does that mean that this, this lot, this rezoning to commercial it could not become a trucking business unless the building inspector approves that use? Is that correct? It. Yeah. That's what yeah. I, that was my understanding of the situation. And normally the building inspector will call and ask me if he's got any questions. Hmm. 
then it would require site plan review and special permit as a commercial use. Any further discussion? But just one, one last question. Okay. Can, can, if, can, that, can the business, the, the, the existing business be expanded across the property line? Um, I think it would be up to the building inspector who's the zoning enforcement officer. And would, would that still change the use of this parcel such that it would require site plan review? I think, Tom, you were, you were foreseeing the kind of amoeba effect, expanding from the existing parcel into this newly rezoned parcel and kind of bypassing all the other controls. Is that what you were? That, that's my question. Yeah. It's... It shouldn't be allowed. It has been a problem in the past that very often these things aren't picked up if there's no application for a building permit. But in this case, the parcel is so visible, I think that that would probably not, not happen. And then it would put the party that did such a thing at financial risk of enforcement actions and fines. Yeah, or redoing or whatever. But yeah, I, I think technically it would have to happen. Um, as I say, enforcement tends to be the, the way most zoning bylaws are enforced is because of somebody pulls a permit. Um, but it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way. And in this case, the parcel is very visible. Okay. Any further discussion? A building permit would only be pulled if a building was going up, not necessarily parking on an adjacent property, correct? Correct. And that's why we all need to be vigilant. I will ask one more time. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Sarah? Hang on, ask others. Uh, Don, aye. Judy? Aye. Brant? Aye. Tom? Opposed. Opposed? Yes. Sarah? I am also opposed. Okay. Hey, the motion passes with um, three votes to two. Okay. And before this, just this, let me get this in so I'm not confused. We just had three votes or two? <laughs> we three. The, okay, then I guess I'm in line. The first one was on the courier changes marijuana. The second one was about approving. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there were two marijuana ones. No, just, just one, right? One marijuana, but it had two different. That's items. the one that had one two vote pieces. for two businesses. Yeah. Uh, vote for two businesses. The second oh. vote was to not add. Oh, wait a minute, company. wait a minute, please. I can't keep up with this. And if it's votes, it needs to be perfect. So the first one was marijuana, and there's only one of those, or or there are two two of those. Part two marijuana, part one. There's marijuana one courier or and marijuana delivery, and we voted to add definitions and add them to the table. Are you saying the two parts are courier is one part and delivery is the other? See, this is what I came in at the end of, I think. I was late here today, but. Brent, why don't we're you put your, your document? We're adding two different business types to town. Right. And one's the courier and delivery is part of one chunk and one vote. 
both of those things? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so Mary, we voted on. And for that, it was unanimously yes. And it was to approve the proposal as it's shown on the document that's on screen right now. Yes. Right. Correct. And what that did is add definitions to the marijuana bylaw and also added two uses to the table of use. Those being courier. These being the one I've highlighted on screen. Courier and delivery are separate there. Yep, okay. Okay, that's vote one. Unanimously, yes. And then the second vote was the vote not to approve trucking and construction equipment services to be have definitions and table of use entry for that. Correct. Right. And everybody voted yes not to have it. Correct. Correct. So nothing will change there. It'll stay the way it is. So the last one is to change the zoning of parcel 120242 on State Road from Agres 1 to commercial. We have three yeses and two opposed. So it passed three to two. Right. Okay, I'm straight on that. Okay, now Thank we're going to have an update on landscaping at uh, 134 Christian Lane. Take it away, Sarah. Take it away. I, to some extent, need to recuse myself from voting on this one because I am in a butter. Um, but I will say that um, I can give insight on that side. But Tom and I, two Saturdays ago, uh, along with an abutter Gretchen Vecta, took a walk around the property to verify what the landscaping had been done in comparison to the as-built and all in the maintenance of it, and also in comparison to the 2017 proposal way back when, which is only on paper, but, um, and we found many plants not healthy in many portions. And um, there was nothing underneath the um, panels, which was interesting. Um, part of this was initiated because a screening tree that was part of the initial plans was cut in the week of December 24th to the 31st. And we were verifying that it had been returned um, and it's a lovely con color, small con color um, spruce. What else, Tom? It hadn't been returned, right? It had been replaced. Replaced, yes. It's not, <laughs> yes. It wasn't a still live on. replacement was put in. Was, was all the planting that had been required in the terms of conditions there? I would say what hasn't, isn't extremely stressed and looking like it's going to perish, there are many, many um not surviving um landscape plants on those the, along the, the west and uh, all sides hmm. okay but it wasn't clear to me from driving by that on the west side that all the plants that were on the on the site on the planting plan had actually been planted they you, you found them all? No, there were dead ones. Well, but, and they had, how we they put it on it is, the as built is not how it is. Um, many more Ilex hollies are in the rear portion and there are less arborvitaes in the front. And that is now a wood slat fence on the 
first portion of the west side. Mm -hmm. And those are extremely stressed by water, anything that's there. The general, the general condition is that the, other than the arborvitae, the plants haven't been maintained yet over, over time, and they're just simply not growing. If the intent was to develop um, screening, it has not achieved that goal over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'd, you, you made the maintenance part, need for maintenance and replacement clear. I'm just curious whether all there, the planting I, was done originally. There is no plantings on the rear portion of the east side at all. There is no screening back there at all. That was and never in the plan. And, I don't think. And, and along the wetlands, along the I wetlands, thought all sides were screened. That's why I wanted to see the 17 plan. We didn't have a 17 landscape plan. Right, but our conditions. Yeah. There's all sides should, not the rear, all sides should have been screened to some extent. And so only the very front portion of the east side is screened. So I wanna make, I wanna sort of draw out the following conclusion, yes or no. First, is it your view and Tom's view that based on what you are able to observe, Waitley Renewables did not implement the landscape screening plan as required by the planning board. It has not been satisfactory and it has not been maintained. The condition that most bothers me as an abutter is the condition about the poles and the location that seemed to be completely disregarded. Okay. So now there's three issues. The, there was, Number one, did they originally plant landscape screening plants as required? Two, did they properly maintain those plantings and replace dead, dead um, landscape screening plants as required? And then there's this third issue about the um, location of the utility poles. So we'll come back to the utility poles. So, Based on what you're able to observe, is it your judgment that the initial landscape planting was not, did not conform to planning board requirements? Putting it there's the not adequate. Payment. Yes. There's so yes, not they, adequate screening on the east side. Okay. I, you know, could somebody bring up the conditions? Because I don't think we yeah. can enforce anything that's not in the conditions. Sure. And I'm not sure we can enforce all of that. But the conditions don't say exactly where, but it does say it's going to be screened. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I, I, live I, on that's... East side. I live on the east side, and I, I agree with Sarah that there isn't very much of anything, either screening or landscaping on the east side. I think there's a difference here. I don't think the landscaping was meant as a screening device. I, I think that the screening is is the chain link fence with whatever fabric or 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 view blocking on there. The, the landscaping was more of an aesthetic thing and not there to provide screening. It breaks it up, Fred. Right. It, it breaks it's it up, but, but that wasn't the purpose it's, it's of screening the screening of screening. And I made I made a comment to the to the planning board. I, I think it was after this was all all constructed that there was no consideration of the east side for property owners viewing it on the east side. It was all the the other the other sides, and that should have been considered when it was site plan and approval review here. If you go to um, condition six seven. And eight are the ones that deal with vegetation. Yeah. So and I'm highlighting. That, yeah. You'll see that there's no prescription there for how much how much planting is to be done. Yeah. It just says it's supposed to be maintained. We've certainly learned a lot in the last couple of years, haven't we? Yes, we so have. I, so so I believe... the question about is there enough screening there? There we didn't the board didn't prescribe how much, how many plants should be done and exactly where they should be done. Um, 
but what it did say is where, where things are planted there to be maintained and cared for. And that's so that we, we have a basis for making an observation on that point because it is a, it's condition number seven. Yeah. Did they plant the other two trees? The two yes. west of the driver? Yes. The other two deciduous trees are in place. Yeah, okay. So and, I'd like to ask if people would just hold what I'm screen sharing at, at this moment in their minds for a second. I'd like to switch what I'm screen sharing to the as built plan we received, because I believe that um, phrases like all plantings here in our conditions are legitimately interpreted with, res with reference to the as built plan. All right. So let me stop sharing this and but let this me This is why I really wanted to see the original site plan where they listed what they were planning for the plantings, not the as built. Because this as built, didn't this come about because they were wanting to put in um, battery storage? No, I don't think so. Predates okay. me. But my interpretation, <coughs> if we're looking here, like if you see where I'm highlighting, kind of make that go away. But um, this is the, uh, you know, this is the side along Christian Lane. And to me, this looks like a series of plantings. Um, there are indications of what they were going to be and how their locations and so forth. The West is planted differently than this. There are many hollies. Um, if you can come down just a small bit, Brant. Come down like towards Long Plain? Down like, so we can see the- um, Like in this nope, direction? The other way. We wanted to see way. what the plantings are in the corner to oh, okay. the Let me, top left. Sorry about that. Am I? I'm, nope, I'm the other way. No, the other way. Yeah, oh, there, there we are. The Sorry. Yes. Yep, I'm, I'm with you. There we are. So they're saying those clusters are going to be arborvitae in that portion that's directly west, not the northwest. Right. Okay. Like I see these little clusters of three arborvitae. Those are not arborvitae. Those are much more, that seems that's where they put most of the holly on that yeah. portion. Can I just say something there on that? Sure. Um, there was, yes, there were, or, originally there were arborvitaes there. Uh, the solar company came in, Nexamp. The arborvitaes that were there were not healthy, so they replaced them with the hollies. That's why they're there. Okay. They, they, tried, they replaced them once with, uh, uh, initially, the first round didn't take, so they replanted arborvitaes again, and that didn't take, so they came in and put hollies in. And that's why the hollies are there. And those it's, aren't taking very well either. <laughs> uh, well, there's another issue going on too, because uh, if you noticed all the water that's there, yeah. that's another topic, which I'm concerned about, but that's another issue at another time. Yeah. But that's... I have a feeling why nothing's taking at the moment because there's a lot of water there, which I'd like to uh, do other things and I can't because of the water and it's not because of my doings. Well, so Sarah and Tom, do you have any recommendations for, so you've, I think we've concluded that the I think what I, at least I think what I'm hearing is that it's your view that at least the intent of the landscape screening plan has not been, you know, you know, between implement, implementation and maintenance is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Is that a fair statement? Correct. Okay. Sarah, do you agree? I agree. And I'll simply say when I go up and down Christian and I look over, you know, I see a few from a distance, a few bedraggled looking arborvitaes. And basically I see a lot of wooden fencing 
And the arborvitaes, by virtue of being so sparse and so bedraggled, just makes the whole thing look a little ridiculous. And when I think about all the efforts we've been making to require, say, our marijuana cultivators to you know, screen their properties, I think if, if they were doing what I'm seeing with this Nexam facility, I'd be extremely disappointed. Another item that's of great concern for me, because particularly with runoff and wind erosion, that's the wind erosion in this, in this particular area is high. There isn't a crop under the panels. There is not a live grass. Okay. It's supposed to be a pollinator mix, mix um, grass under there. And I'm pretty sure that was probably in their original site plan, but it did not carry over into this as built. And because it was in the original site plan, it wasn't conditioned right. that there needs to be something on the ground year round. I see. Can I and just add on to that? That um, last year they came in around fall time, I believe it was, but don't quote me on that. But they did Nexamp, meaning they, meaning Nexamp came in and they chewed up all the grass that was there that grew after they um, put all the panels up and such. And they came in and basically cultivated all that. And what they did is they did replant some type of grass that only grows maybe about two feet high at the most, if that. So I don't know, between the harsh winter we've had and all this rain and with a, another issue I have going on, probably that's, it hasn't taken yet, but they came in and they planted new seed down, they straw, I, I'm sure you've noticed the straw all along that east side also that's on the lawn on the outside of the fence. So they came in last year, like I said, late and did all that. I know they've been in recently, but they, their version of planting grass seed is different than my version of planting grass seed. I, I agree with you, Sarah. Um, this is very scattered, not well covered, and not at all scratched into the existing soil. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you. A, as a landowner, I totally agree with you, Sarah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm not a happy camper. About a year and a half ago, we had a meeting with them online and they were telling us that they were going to be putting in pollinators. And this was about the same time that the concrete pad showed up. Um, and I assume, Jeff, that maybe that was pollinators that they thought they were putting in, but as you say, there's not much left of them. Right, exactly. And they, uh, Nexamp hasn't really communicated from, from the word go with me, with the plantings and all that and such, uh, basically, you know, I go to work, I come home and all this stuff is done. So there was a real lack of communication from the word go. Mm -hmm. But now recently, after time here, uh, since 2017, from the planning and all this, uh, I finally got a hold of this individual, uh, Skip Provost. I'm sure you've talked to him yes. probably, Don. Um, I just got introduced to him uh, last year. So actually, if I have a problem, I can talk to him. You know, at least I got somebody I can call and talk to and take it up. And so somewhere along the line, something can get done here. Well, Brad, you've that, been I was talking to otherwise, too, I was right? left in the dark. I go to work, I come home and, you know, I get this is what I got for a planting. Yeah. So I've been having exchanges of emails with okay. Skip Provost around this, you know, and okay. it, it start. I got ultimately got to him around with the disappearance of the evergreen tree and its re eventual replacement. Uh, can I talk? Can we talk about that tree? Sure. Uh, sure. Okay, because he he confronted. He called me uh, this winter. Um, it went missing, and well, like well. Okay, I see it missing, and I'm like, all right, and I don't know what happened to it, and I spoke with Tom uh, a few days ago. He doesn't know what happened to it. We don't know what happened to it, but meanwhile, uh, Nexamp came back in. Skip called me, 
during the winter and said, we're going to come springtime, we're going to replace it. Yep. Okay. No, yep. No problem. Um, so it got replanted, replaced, looks great. Love it. I have a problem with it. A, it's on the neighbor's property mostly, but it is directly on the property line. So to be a friendly neighbor, I would like to have the tree planted on my property and not Mr. Borowski's property per se. And basically it is right on the property line. So if you took a string or if we, Tom or myself wanted to put a fence up, we cannot do that because it, it is directly on the property line more so favoring his property. Is there room to move it? Um, I guess this would be west, you know, um, onto your property sufficiently so that it, I'm just looking at this, this part of the plan. There's a road there. I think what you're saying is you like this tree moved um, westward between the property screen? line and the road such that when it gets bigger, um, it doesn't interfere with the road and, and still stays with entirely, you know, its canopy stays entirely within your property lines. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, I agree with you on that. Um, okay. uh, room wise, uh, at now, yes, but as time goes on, I'm sure the tree gets bigger. I was wondering if we could re, uh, move it, relocate it to the, uh, let's see, south to the last pole. This way is not interfering with the power lines uh -huh, okay. for the power company. And also there's a drain line that's right where it's at. The roots will find the drain line. Mm -hmm. Jeff, can I make a, a suggestion? Sure, Tom. Uh, yes. We originally had wanted them to put something up near near your your property because you've got a tree where we've got that where it says 106 uh, 1.651 acres. Right. We've got yeah. one near the road there on your property, and I think somewhere down south about the corner of the wetlands um, would probably be a better place because that's going to break up the view more. You've got a tree right by the the uh, driveway, one about 50 feet up, and wouldn't hurt to put another one, another 50 or 50, 60 feet north. Uh, sorry, west. Um, I don't have a problem removing the one that's there now, uh, where the uh, where the poles are. Yeah, the other two can stay where they are. They're fine. Yeah, those are fine. Yep. If the only thing I'm asking is if if anything, if we can move that. I'd be happy if we can move it 10 feet onto my property and put it there and be done with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, that works I don't, for me, but I comments from the board. Other than that, uh, I know Tom doesn't care for the tree because I spoke to him a few days ago. Um, I don't care if I have the tree or not, but if I do have the tree, the only thing I'm asking is if we could put it on my property and not his and not on the property line. Uh, like I said, that was lack of communication with the solar company. I come home at the end of the work day and yeah. I see, you know, it looks great and wonderful, but it's just right on the property line. Yeah. So I think we got the message very clearly that Tom Borowski does not want this tree on his land. So we're <laughs> going to make sure that happens. Sarah, I mean, Absolutely. I wonder, Sarah, since you're so closely located, um, if, you know, you and Jeff could work out a location and possibly drop a stake. My impression from Skip Provost is that if we tell Skip, move this tree from here to there, he will get it done. I am happy to work with Jeff with that, but I really do believe that the Borowskis and the Bechtas should be involved because that's much more their view. My view for my house is the rear portion of the east side and the Borowski's house. Um, the Beck does actually view it directly. Yeah. And the Borowski's part of that was set up originally for the Ferrex who owned it at that time, particularly absolutely, Sarah. Irene. And, and absolutely. That tree was initially to pacify Irene because she didn't want to look at the telephone poles. So it's there. 
And like yeah. I said before, a little while ago that I talked to uh, Mr. Borowski a few days ago, it was on a Friday and uh, he didn't care for the tree being on his property. So now it's on his property. He can do whatever he wants with it, but he does not care for it to be on his property. He just rather see it gone and not be there at all is what he told me a few days ago. And the key part of having the evergreen was screening. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but maybe the people who we thought we were screening whatever from really don't feel this is helpful or necessary. I think you need to hear from the Bechtas. I suggest that Gretchen, that's right. Could Gretchen, I go ahead. step back a bit? Um, um, let me just say that the screening, the evergreen grew in such a nice manner um, <clears throat> before it did disappear. It kind of, softened that first pole, which has three hard boxes on it. So as you looked across the street from any of my front windows, which is my entire living area, um, I could see the pole, but the evergreen behind it kind of softened the fact that there's three hard, large boxes. So if you do move it over, you know, it's going to lose some of its screening purposes. I don't know if there's any other alternatives to it. That first pole does carry on the lower end a lot of hard surfaces. You want to come stand on the yard, look out of my kitchen, my dining room, my living room, my front porch. All I see is poles, hard surfaces, and, you know, it, it had gotten kind of nice. You just didn't kind of notice the pole as much until it was gone. So I'm hoping some placement can help with that. How about oh, like just the other Gretchen, side of the road, Gretchen? I'm sorry? How about just the other side of the road, just move it straight west? Um, you know, again, it was a background filter for me. Uh, yeah. So you, if it moved down a little bit, it may help if it stays kind of fluffy. Um, you know, I agree. Moving it completely down to like another area of the pole line would not do anything. Yeah. I suggest that we write a letter to Jeff Provost and say that we're concerned about the lack of maintenance of the existing vegetation. We're concerned about the lack of pollinators, grass under the panels, and that we would like the evergreen relocated to a spot that's um, more suitable, that the neighbors can agree upon, I phrase it better than that, but basically get it off, off the lot line and to if a spot move, that- If we can just move that tree, you know, like five or eight feet, just get it away from the line because it's gonna grow a little bit. I, I'd be fine with that. Since that's initially what the plan was for anyway. Sounds, I just basically wanted like it that off the line. We'd get Gretchen her-, her, um, her Why don't Gretchen, uh, Jeff and Sarah get together and decide on where it should go. And yeah, okay, okay, right. good. So, and I, I strongly concur with Judy's recommendation that we write a letter. Obviously, the we as a planning board don't have any enforcement authority, um, and I think it's premature to turn this over to the building inspector and sort of refer it for enforcement. I think the first step is a letter. Uh, an email, you know, a, a formal no, letter, a letter, a signed letter, a signed letter, via which we can board. transmit via email um, from the planning board expressing concern, not a threat, not a threatening letter. I think I think I would attach the I would attach the um, document that Sarah and Tom produced and yeah. say that we're concerned about these issues. Yeah. And I, in addition, I would ask that, um, that Jeff come and meet on site with members of the planning board to talk about it. I yep. think you mean Skip Provost or Jeff Skip, Kokon? Skip, I'm sorry. Skip. Skip, yeah. Um, that may be a more challenge. I mean, we can ask. He, he lives some distance away, but, and he may not be able to come personally, but, but we can certainly make that request. Where, where I was going to ask next is would you know, 
we've agreed that a letter needs to be written, which means somebody needs to do the writing. Is that something that, um, is that task something that Tom and or Sarah would be willing to take on? Drafting a letter um, that we would then review and discuss. I think we would have to, just like your report, we would have to discuss it in a public hearing before sending it. No, I don't think so. You don't think we, so? We've, no, we've, we've outlined what we want to say. We have the basis, basic report. I mean, I, I can certainly send you the word template that we've been using for letters and so forth. It would be good to have a lead author and then assume that the rest of us on the board will serve as proofreaders and polishers or, and enhancers. You're making a face there. You work in a physics department. I mean, you could throw formula in there. I, I'd be happy to write the letter. I've got one that I can take and modify because I wrote them on three years ago. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. okay. I'll write the letter and then I'll send it to Sarah to you and then you can send it to Tom for additional comments. How's that? Well, send Thank it you. to all of us, please, Don. All right. Okay. And I think you should you should indicate that you're attaching their the result of their walk. Right. All right. And I would make um, one 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 three thousand foot um, recommendation, and that is, you know, we, we talk about bringing consultants to work with the board on another a number of issues. We did this. We talked about engineers with solar. Um, Plantings and screenings has continually come up in the past couple of years that I've been on the board. It's a constant point of discussion. Um, I think we should be considering uh, bringing and someone representing the board from a landscape architecture point of view um, so that we can be more specific in what we're asking and not leave it up to the judgment of the applicant yeah. um, to, to uh, try to interpret what we were saying. I think we need to be more clearer in what we're directing in our conditions, the, mm -hmm. the, the, build, the, the applicants to, are going to do. Are going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time we had kind of a landscape arc on the, uh, on the planning board and she made a number of, of suggestions as to what, what it was, what was her name, Farrell? Yeah, Helena. Helena, Helena Farrell. The problem was we didn't get it done on a plan, but but it was very helpful having her because she was able to to suggest specific types for wetlands, specific types for near the road and that kind of thing. I think it's a it's a good proposal, and if we don't have organic expertise at that level on the board, there's the question of you know could we. So, hire and pay somebody on a consulting basis to-, to We certainly them. can, we can get experts for this. Yeah. Just like if we're doing it again, we should get experts to consult on the position of the polls, which, right. Right. which we were misled. On. We relied on their good goodwill and it was a mistake. Yeah. So I, I'm aware, you know, it's almost seven. I, we have one more item with uh, Larry Brotherton, and I. So I, but I don't want to. I want to make sure we're we're come to some closure for the evening on the Waitley Renewable Site. Jeff, uh, you mentioned, you know, other concerns you have. Is that something we should need to take up tonight, or is that something for a future meeting? I gather um, related to I'm the water too... that's accumulating. Yes, um, I like to, I don't know where to start or if I could start with you folks, if I should start at the select board, but at some point I'm sure I'd like to meet with the highway department, Mr. Bardwell and others in, to deal with a, a drainage issue that we have on Christian Lane. That's, I think that's better start with Keith. Yeah. So I think I need to start with the select board. Then at some point, the next avenue would be calling him in after the select board meeting. So there's a phase of meetings to go along. Well, Keith's pretty open. I would talk to him personally before I go to the select board. Okay. You know, what I'd say from, you know, where I sit on the planning board is that 
as your these kind of conversations go forward, if there are things that you are learning or pieces of advice you feel it need to be shared back with the planning board as we consider, you know, Absolutely. future solar kinds of installations and applications, anything like that would be very helpful. I'd, I'd be helpful if I were, if the solar company would communicate with me better and anybody that wants to take a tour on my property, I'd like to be notified of that as well. I mean, especially being a property you know, Don, owner, taxpayer, can, landowner. Consider, yeah, consider including some of this in your letter. My impression is at least for now, I, I don't know how long the Skip Provost has been in position in this role. I, but, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, what I can say is from the moment I got in communication with him related to that evergreen tree, he's been very responsive. Yep. Um, you know, whether what that really means about the future relationship and, you know, maybe if they find out that he's very responsive, they'll fire him. I don't know. <laughs> but um, but so far, it seems like he's been trying to do the right thing and stay on the right. You know, that's the, that's the impression I get on as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh, talk to Larry. I have one last question for Jeff. How can we contact you to set up when we do go onto your property, uh, you can if call my cell phone. Next amp, because next amp probably has rights of way. Yeah, they just have the uh, right of way to do what they need to do. That's why that roadway is in there for. Yeah. Um, you so can call my cell. Email. I mean, I'd like to make sure if we do another site walk, or when meeting with Gretchen, we can. Absolutely. Uh, you can call my cell phone number. I can give it to you right now if you'd like. Thanks, Jeff. Let me know when you're ready. Yep. Okay, 413. Yep. 992 7944. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Okay, let's move on to the uh, last part. Yeah. So Larry Brotherton, you're you're still out there. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear yep. you now. Okay. Um so maybe since I've been interacting with Larry, I'll just do a little table setting. Uh, so I'm grabbing the, the paperwork here. So Larry Brotherton is here tonight. He uh, represents or is a principal at Tightline Properties LLC. He operates a, a landscaping company. He submitted an application for site plan approval for a, um, Larry, I believe the parcel is currently undeveloped. Is that correct? Uh, that would be correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, the the address of the property is 83 State Road. So we're not tonight. This is just an informal conversation. This is not a public. It's a public meeting, but it's not a public hearing. Um, the purpose of our conversation with Larry tonight is to just get some questions asked and answered sort of informally between us, the planning board, and Mr. Brotherton about his uh, site plan uh, request. Uh, possibly, ideally, potentially tonight, at least make agreement on scheduling a formal public hearing for the site plan review, uh, making sure tonight that uh, Mr. Brotherton knows uh, we've had a chance to discuss what he's currently submitted uh, along with his application for site plan approval and uh, give him any feedback that's necessary as to the completeness uh, and adequacy of what he submitted for the uh, site plan review. So that's what we're doing tonight. So what we've received to date has been um, some front and side elevations and floor plans for the building or buildings. I can't remember, is there two buildings? Um, yeah, let me, I can uh, clarify a little bit about, because we've had, I'm just bringing up the, uh, the electronic documentation. I can share my screen in a moment. Um, we've, of course, received the site plan uh, review application form. We've received um, documentation on the septic plan. 
which looks like we have a five page document on the um, septic onsite sewer plan. Because again, it's an undeveloped parcel at the moment. And we've received some um, images that provide, which I can now, let me share, I'm gonna share my screen. So we've received some images of the proposed structure to be built. And it's, you know, we've got detailed plans on the structure itself. These images, I don't know, Larry, are you just on a phone or are you on Zoom so you can see what I'm sharing? I, I, I can see what you're sharing. I am on Zoom. Yeah. Okay, very good. For some so reason, this is... So this is one image, this is another image, and I can go back and forth as people request, but the, this would, I guess, be the plot plan or site plan that Larry has submitted along with this application. And I think this is the extent of uh, what he's given us. And just for context, to the right of the, um, the hedge on the right side is where one call does it all is located. That's correct, yep. Okay, so to the right of this hedge in the diagram. Right. Yep. So this okay. is uh, parcel 35-1. Okay, all right. Um, so we had there, I'm sorry, did I hear somebody speak? Yeah, I think that what we'd like to see rather than an oblique view like this is an actual plan showing the property lines and then you've got some distances on there, uh, but something just a bit more formal than this. I think it actually need a, an engineering kind of plan. Could I... Um... Previous site plans that have come before the board are in fact public records, right? I'm thinking, would it be helpful to Larry if I showed an example of a previously reviewed and approved site plan? I mean, we don't have one for this kind of operation, but like I was thinking showing them the sovereign builders plan or something like that, just to give an illustration of what we're looking for. Is there any reason why I shouldn't be sharing here? No, tonight? not at all. Okay. Also, he, he should be familiar with the list of site plan requirements in the zoning, which, yeah. which detail the information that's, that's required. Yeah. But in this case, since it's on state road, you're going to have to deal with curb cuts and turning radiuses and things like that that um, don't, always, don't always apply. So I went to uh, the contractor that I'm using um, to do the excavation work. We're, we're having a little trouble hearing you, Larry. Could you maybe get closer to your microphone or speak up a little bit, please? Um, is this any better? Yes, that's better. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the excavating company that I've hired um, has already went to uh, the um, DOT and uh, has requested a curb cut from them already. Okay. So, and uh, as far as I know, they are approving it. So I don't know, that's, that's where I'm at at that point. Um, when I had the design made up by Laura Guy, uh, she, I thought that was the building plan itself. I thought that was sufficient. Um, you're saying that I need more of an engineer with plot lines. Let me show you an example of the kind of um, detailed plan that we've received from, say, a different applicant. Yep. So this is an example where you, you know, this is an engineering level plan where. Uh, Parcel boundaries are shown, so it's a it's a view from above. Uh, you see, you know, relevant uh, topological lines, issues of drainage, yeah. where new structures are going to go. Um, 
so the the images, the the three D, you know, elevations are not really what we normally are, are able to work with. Okay. We need to see things like lighting locations, um, the numbers of parking spaces, um, landscaping, as you've just heard ad nauseum. Um, yeah. well, but don't have to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Any any. Um, any land engineer does these routinely. Yeah. You need In to fact, show the, the types of zoning that needs to indicate the zoning uh, with um, setbacks, things like that. Yeah. And this is actually the one that I'm showing here from a, a proposed self-storage facility. This was one built to be built on State Road so there was also indications of curb cuts and, um, and you know, all that sort of thing. So this would be the model to aspire to, um, to sort of ensure that the site plan review goes smoothly. You might also send him the, one of the Sugarloaf shop uh, marijuana retail. Oh, sure, that's good, okay. Maybe I'll, we'll just come back to this other um, point. So on the application for site plan approval, the Larry, uh, Mr. Brotherton described the proposed use as follows, equipment storage for landscaping company with two offices. And we were, you know, those of us who sort of looked at that and were scratching our heads a little bit to understand how this fit within the existing zoning bylaws, table of use, had a little exchange of email with Mr. Brotherton about that. And so Mr. Brotherton, would you, um, you know, share with the board your assessment of what, uh, what, the, what your proposed use would be as, um, as, a new, as described in the existing table of use? Yeah, so I, I don't know if you got my last email, um, but I, uh, let me see, let me see if I can say this up real quick. Um, I did get your email, but that was just simply between you and me. So I'm doing this yeah. for the benefit of the public. So, so what I, what I found was that I really, I tend to seem to fall into by the bylaws it, it, under what I understand um would be that I, I fall into 171-11 okay. so yep. on page eight so um and that you know I will not be living in the establishment you know it um it, it says that business services and supply services establishment i.e you know uh Automobile parts, office equipment, maintenance services, contractors, tradesperson shop, or craft workshop conducted entirely within the building. Unless hold, hold on a second, I'm 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 a little puzzled here. So, you're saying that your you believe your use is is what we define in the zoning bylaws as an accessory use. An accessory use. I'm not. Well, because you referred to 171-11 in the zoning bylaws. Yeah. And that so section speaks about accessory uses. Yeah. So. And so that, I don't think that's where you want to go. Because, that's under home occupation. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not what this is. Yeah, it's definitely not a home occupation at all. I mean, this is a zoned commercial parcel. So um, I'm really not sure where I fall then in, in the bylaws because there's no, as I read through, I didn't, I could not find anything yeah. that I, um, but maybe since you guys are more familiar with it, maybe there is something. Well, I had some difficulty too, although it seems to me that you're, your use is a perfectly legitimate commercial use and yeah. would make a lot of sense. I'm, 
I'm thinking maybe the first place to go is to talk to the building inspector and ask his opinion. Okay. Because he would have to issue the building permit. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll talk to the building inspector on that. Um, because, I mean, the, the nature of my business is, you know, I have, uh, have one office assistant and then I use my own office and I have um a, a couple other employees that work in the field you know and that can vary on how much workflow i have usually it's only at any given time i employ uh you know three to five people so it's not a whole lot of traffic that will be in and out of the area um it's really they, they leave in the morning and they don't come back until about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I just want to put out there the idea. I, I, I agree with Judy's recommendation that getting the opinion of the building inspector is your best first move. But I might suggest that you consider or that this be this end up being considered a professional office. There is in the table of use under commercial uses um, a, a, a valid use for professional and business offices, including but not limited to medical, legal, banking, insurance, and real estate, unless qualifying as a home occupation. And, you know, including but not limited to a number of, you know, professional, I, I see no reason why a, um, you might say the, the Waitley headquarters of a landscaping company couldn't be considered a professional office. My one concern is chemicals or fuel storage. Yes, that's right. So yeah. the part of this that was a little concerning um, is the you know equipment storage and all that that might entail. Yep. So um, I you know I use small equipment. So um, I don't I don't do any lawn fertilizations or any of that you know just so there are no chemicals that I use um, I'm you know I'm very much of a organic company so um, you know so that there is no yeah I don't and and truth be told the reason I stopped using chemicals is because I had a hose break and. It went across my face and I got a chemical burn from it. And at that point, I was like, I'm done. So I don't, I don't do that anymore. You know, um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? Fuel storage for your equipment. Uh, yes. So I don't do fuel storage for my equipment. They, um, they go to the gas station. They all have their own card that they fill up on. And that's, that's how I run it. Yeah. So. Yeah, those are the items that would need to be addressed with the building inspector in case there were, because yeah. I mean, even organic chemicals, if you do use those, are also um, water supply and stuff. Those are also susceptible. On page 10 of the table of uses, we've got other light industrial uses not involving use of hazardous materials, pistol activity, and no offensive, injurious, or noxious hazards. Right. So that's on under light industrial on page 10. I yep. see. So and that's a special a special permit. Yeah. Um, so that would require, don't. yeah, that would require the ZBA, right, Don? Um in a commercial yeah. district. Yep. I think it would, yeah. I think you'd for, for any kind of commercial thing like that, you'd need a special permit anyway. Okay. Um all right, so um, let me see. So I will need some engineering plans. I'll need to reach out to building inspector, talk to him about um, chemicals and uh, the fuel. And, that, uh, but, um, and then, um, yeah, I guess that's it. 
I think that's true. I'll, I'll just hold on one more second, Sarah. So I think we've we've offered two uh, ideas or options for what the best characterization of the proposed use. But I think you still need to get the opinion of the building inspector. If if it were if the building inspector could agree that it were a you know professional office. You know, understanding there's going to be storage of material and equipment, um, that at least would not require a special permit in the commercial district. It's allowed by right. However, it still requires planning board review and approval. If it were a professional office, yep. however, if if it were more like what Don suggested meaning it was a light industrial use, then it requires a special permit, meaning, Larry, that you would have to have a hearing, and a meeting and a hearing with the Zoning Board of Appeals to obtain that special permit before you could use this um, parcel in this way. Okay, I, um, so, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. So um, I am, you know, in light of all of this, and I really appreciate you guys' time. So thank you for that. Um, but on a side note, um, I am currently operating at a facility in Hatfield where um, I got a knock on my door uh, a week ago, or maybe a week and a half ago. Um, from the sheriff's department and I am being evicted um, because the homeowner has um, not paid the mortgage. So it's being taken over by the bank. So I am trying to do this. I know there's, you know, we have to follow the rules and the bylaws and all that, but um, if there was any way to have this go a little bit faster, um that would be greatly appreciated because i need a place to operate so i a, a couple of questions um I, I totally appreciate the desire to move this possible how 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 much we can help with that remains to be seen i it seems possible that we the planning board could schedule a public hearing as early as I think, Judy, we could potentially have a public hearing in two weeks time. Is that, or no, we have to, because we need enough It has time to be to advertised for two weeks. Yeah, okay, all right. Before, so, so even if we could get it in this week, the earliest we could do is three weeks, but as of the day that the legal hearing, legal ad appears, we would need to post the plan. Ah, okay. So, so the public could see the, the plan. So the plan has to be available uh, also, for that two week period. Also the plan has to go out to all the other boards and committees so they can comment. We need the approval of the board of health. We'd need, mm. you, you know, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not that easy, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Transparency is cumbersome. Yeah. Um, so I don't, yeah. And, and so it does sound like we are not even tonight able to, I mean, the, the real question, Larry, is that there are things that you would have to prepare and deliver like these, you know, this complete engineering plan and so forth. And we'd have to have that in hand, ready to be posted at least two weeks before the public hearing. Yeah. So um, it might be that if he could get a preliminary sketch with a lot of these details on it without necessarily having the engineer, we could post that, but it would have to include things like the septic Right. And the lighting and yeah. and you know to be 
a little more formal at least, but I, I'm not even sure about that. It's, it's not a trivial uh, structure and occupation really. I mean, it is and it isn't, I, I, I don't know, but I think we need something fairly, fairly complete to post so people can see. And along with the description of the business, uh, a written description, what would be there, hours of op operation, types of equipment to be stored, that kind of thing. Yeah. I guess I'll also ask this question, Larry. Um, right now, this parcel at 83 State Road is undeveloped. It's just, you know, grass. So it, even if you had to move your equipment tomorrow from Hatfield to this parcel, there won't be a building there. <laughs> so yep. um, it seems like we're really, I mean, there's a, the, the various boards and committees can try to move this through their processes as fast as we possibly can, but it, it's still going to take you some time to even get a building built for this on this land. Yep. So you're really in a situation, seems like you, there's a question that I don't know whether the planning board can even answer this. It's like, how can you use this parcel of land on a temporary basis starting very soon? You know, you know, like, can you put a couple of storage pods down and move your equipment there and just store them in pods on this land? I don't know if that would make sense, but I don't know what's, what kind of, what the town would allow for such temporary uses without permanent structures. Yeah, I think that's beyond our purview, yeah. Brad. I believe so too. I mean- Again, I think maybe the building inspector might help, I, but I, I'm not quite sure where that question would fall. Yeah. <laughs> so we really have to focus on what we can do in the, with the planning board. And so I, I think our, we can schedule a public hearing as quickly as we have a complete, uh, an acceptable package of plans to review from you. So, so it's most important, Larry, that you leave tonight feeling that you've gotten clear feedback from us and understand that feedback about what's needed to have a complete application for review. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very clear feedback that, you know, I need an engineering plan and then, you know, to talk to the inspect building inspector to find out where I really fall um, in those bylaws. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's pretty clear. Um, <clears throat> and as far as, you know, maybe moving over there or putting in a storage container or something like that. I mean, those are non-permanent structures. So I don't, I don't really see where that would fall into yeah. any it does. So, it's, it, yeah, that's outside of our scope. Yeah. And so, okay. Yeah, but I think, I think I have everything that I need. Thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Right. I'm sorry it's so complicated, but that's life. It's, yeah. it's for everybody's protection. You'd be happy if the guy next to you were going through this too. Yep. So on our hands up the road. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Stay in touch and I'm happy to, you know, I can respond to emails and, you know, help, help <laughs> do this. Just keep me informed when you're ready to move forward. I will. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Good night. All right. What else is on our agenda? So I think we got the email about the minutes, Mary. So, yeah. so. Oh, I have I one very, very quick update. Uh, Brian Domina told me yesterday that John Baronis has withdrawn his request to, for rezoning. It will not be on the, on the warrant. Oh, interesting, okay. Um, okay. All right. 
So I don't think we have any. So I think we're into the additional items, not anticipated. Well, Larry was an additional item not anticipated. Okay. I think we're ready to adjourn. Don, what do you think about that idea? You're, you're muted. You, you can't. You have to unmute if we're going to really adjourn. <laughs> Don is having trouble unmuting. There, now I'm unmuted. Okay, uh, there. Uh, entertain there. A, a motion. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor? Don, yes. Brant? Yes. Tom? Yes. Judy? Yes. Sarah? Yes, please. This meeting is adjourned. Okay, and we're having Thanks, our everybody. next regular meeting in May. Is that correct? As far as we know, just reconfirm. Yeah, let's. So I may that be joining be... you from another state. Thirty-first. So the thirty-first. Thirty-first of May.